talk live yesterday. Are they censoring people? I don't know, but it happened to me yesterday. So I got to, I can't go on for another week, but I was just, you know, I always tell people, tell the truth until they kick you off the platforms. And so I was trying to tell the truth about the machine and there's a good machine and a bad machine. And the school system has you 99% of humanity is a cog in the wheel of the economy. They're in the wheel. So what I'm going to talk about today, I got the controversial little slide behind me. Richest people in the world. Is it fair that these people, you can see they're all men for the most part. The richest are all men. Is it fair that that top row of men have more money? To be clear, they have more money than the entire half, least wealthy half of the world. 10, 20 men have more money than the bottom half of the damn world. Is it fair? Is it good? Is an outgrowth a natural consequence of capitalism? That's kind of what I was talking about, but I was digressing and kick-cock. TikTok, TikTok, <laughs> TikTok, um, TikTok was bothered. Rick, I'm gonna need to see that Insta. It's super important. So you're gonna just give me on your phone. So Instagram, I'm live on Instagram everywhere. I'm on my own Zoom. I'll do some few giveaways, but only for people on the Zoom. I'll put the link for the Zoom. But what I want to talk about is kind of like just the three steps to getting out of the machine. Okay. Now. These people, I call them the warlords of the world. These are the warlords. Now, a lot of people are looking for saints. They're like, Ty, I don't like Bill Gates billionaire because he's a bad guy. That's how my mom is. I'm like, mom, these are all warlords. <laughs> like Genghis Khan. Warlords is the correct analogy for people who make $100 billion. It's just how the game goes. It's like $100 billion. You put body, there's bodies buried in the Vegas desert right now from somebody off here. The, the, a physical body. They were assassinated. No blood, empires are built with blood, sweat, and violence. I find it interesting that in society now you're like, you're not gonna believe this. The people who came to America to bring their empire were mean to the empire that already existed. I'm like, where have you been? <laughs> you are a product of the educational system of the machine. It's called the outrage machine. How do you get people to stay in a nine to five job? You keep them outraged. You keep them distracted. Roman Empire, <laughs> UFC, even though I like the UFC. If Roman Empire had the Coliseums, we had UFC. You know, they had their concerts. We have Spotify. The, the opiate of the masses is what? The opiate of the masses? Karl Marx in the 1800s said religion is the hope, opiate of the masses. My dad told me, his dad, my great-grandfather, who was a sailor from Spain and Portugal, he said, oh, man, your your grandpa used to smoke hashish. So that's the opiate of the masses is no longer religion. The opiate of the masses is the distractions. It's sports, and I love sports, but I'm also not confused by what it is. But it's also outrage. To keep people outraged, they're constantly distracted from the fact that their life sucks. Why does your life suck? Because... You're not driving the machine, the car. You're like a wheel and you're going around and around and you're being ground into the dirt. But somebody's driving it. I mean, these people occupy, uh, a lot of people work for these people. I think Warren Buffett has 150,000 people working for him, a small city. Jeff Bezos, more. Who else? I mean, these people employ a million people, work directly for these people. And then when you think of the indirect people, it's it's 30% of the world in the supply chain and all this. So the reason for my talk and maybe the reason that Instagram, uh, that TikTok booted me off is I was just calling it like it is. And it's like, no, I'm not on, I'm not on <laughs> TikTok right now streaming. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Insta, and I'm also on just my Zoom. So the question is, if you can't beat them, join them. That's my thing. If you can't beat them, join them. You ever heard that saying? So a lot of people are like, eat the rich. You're not going to be able to eat the rich. Nobody in the history of humanity, the whole reason they're warlords throughout history, the Genghis Khans or the Bill Gates, is because they're good at war. So don't just think you're going to walk up and eat the rich. The, it, the rich will annihilate you. 
The rich was Julius Caesar. You know, the rich was Rockefeller. He's still here. The rich was Carnegie. They're still Carnegie Hall when you go to New York City. They still winning and they've been dead for a hundred years or a thousand years. So what I'm saying to you is the way you get off the machine and the machine is the nine to five. The machine is doing things you hate. The machine is the grind. The machine is the stress because you don't have enough money. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's a triangle pyramid. At the bottom is physiological. Next up is safety. Until you have those bottom two, you are not getting your needs met and you're in a freak out situation. Now, as you begin to make more money, we have different levels of people on this. We have beginners. They haven't even launched yet. I always say there's beginners, those that have launched their own business, those that are scaling their own business, and those who are retiring or semi-retiring. Those are the four levels. Every single one of you. Now, some of you, most people are on the bottom level. They haven't even begun to think about controlling their own economic destiny, their own financial destiny. There's people at the bottom. That's 98% of humanity right there at the bottom. And they're not even thinking about it because it's intimidating. Why is it intimidating? Because from age six to age 18, you didn't learn how to launch a business. You didn't learn how to launch a website. You didn't learn marketing. You didn't learn how to read a contract. You didn't learn how to buy real estate. You didn't learn how to build a physical e-com business. You, no, it's all new. And even if it wasn't new, nobody's teaching it in school. So the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation because they're at the bottom of Maslow's higher archy of needs. They're still struggling with physiological needs, food, shelter, water. And above that, if they have just enough to have food, shelter, wa water, they don't have enough in the bank to have safety. And that famous psychologist, Maslow, he said, you can't focus on the other things, love, happiness, um, higher purpose, until you have those bottom two financial needs met. And so it's super important that each of you, you like dot, you go, the, the first day of your life, people say, oh, the first day of your life is finding your meaning. And the first day of life, and all that. there's all these, you ever heard these cliches? The first day of your life is, no, the, the first day of your life, really, is when you move off the bottom one, where you're not struggling with food, shelter, water, and safety. That's the beginning of life, what we call humanity. That's the beginning of humanity where you begin to do the things that humans do. Take a break, not be stressed, play music, play art, work on your body, find love, build a family, all these kind of things. Throughout history, most people have been stuck at the bottom. You know, 100 billion people, they say, have been born and died on planet Earth. 100 billion, Google it. What percentage of those people move, were able to really move up? They may have had kids, but what percentage of people liked life. They woke up like this guy, Warren Buffett. He says he wakes up and he tap dances out of bed. He's so excited. I know George Carl. He's a basketball coach, NBA basketball coach, coached against Michael Jordan. And I remember the first time I met him, he was like, oh, I'm playing against Kobe Bryant in the Lakers tomorrow. I said, how do you feel? Are you bored? You've been a coach for 50 years, almost a player or a coach. He said, I feel like a teenager, man. He's like, he made $50 million coaching basketball. And he goes every day, or every game, I feel like I'm a teenager. I'm so excited. I get nervous. And I'm, all, and I'm going, yeah, this guy is out of the machine doing his own thing. And so he's he's been nothing. He's launched his career. He's scaled his career. And now he's retired. The four levels of money, of profit. So who here is at the bottom rung? You haven't even launched your own way to make money. You're, you're, a, you're still in the machine. You're either getting government money or you're working a job you don't like. Who's at the bottom? Just put bottom. Nothing wrong with bottom. Now, who here has already launched a business? You, you're self-employed. You've already launched. Who's in launch stage? Put in the word launch, please. Okay. Alex talks is 67 steps one of the best programs I believe ever. John says, Ty is a marketing genius. I highly recommend it, of course. Well, thank you. Okay, who's next? Who's launched, but you ain't making a ton of money? Put the word launch. Who's doing pretty well? And now you're trying to scale level three. Put the word scale. You're already making some money, and now it's time to go up. Scale. Who's in level four where you're... 
you could retire or semi-retire any time you want because you got money. By the way, you should never really retire. They've done the stats. When old people retire, they die real quick. So you want to stay in a semi-retired state forever. But it's nice to be semi-retired. Level one, level two, level three, level four. What level are you? Rocco, what's up? Oh, a friend of mine. He's in level four. So now you're semi-retired or you're looking to semi-retire. I got Kaiser Ahmed scale. Drew is retiring or thinking about semi-retiring. Good. So let's talk. Let me just talk you through because I've been in every single one of those. Okay. I started at the bottom. You know, I won't repeat my story too much, but mom, single mom, dad's in prison when I'm born, Long Beach, California, Los Angeles. Dad's in a terminal island prison. I'm at the bottom. Okay. All right. Some of these, about 75% of wealthy people had wealthy parents or above average. Okay. We were talking about Warren Buffett. Worth over 100 billion, multi generation wealthy family. His dad was a famous, or grandfather was a famous judge. They were well connected. Uh, Bill Gates, his father was one of the wealthiest lawyers in, I think, his state, you know? So when we think about, you know, how do we say? When we think about where you are, if you're at the bottom, you're at the bottom. It's okay. These people, a lot of them started on level two. A lot of people started on level two. Does that make sense? But if you're starting on level one, join the crowd. I started on level one. Okay. I started on level one. Bill Gates started on level two for the most part. Okay. Anybody here have rich parents? Who have rich parents? Any rich parents people here? Put rich. Put poor. Put poor. Put rich. What do we got? Anybody have hyper rich parents? <laughs> Who's that person? Can we be friends? Can we be friends? Give me one second. I want to. It's easier for me to read some comments on my phone okay best business if you're at the bottom i got the simplest most practical advice you've ever got become a commission-based salesperson boom there you go standing ovation i'm leaving the talk i could just stop right there if you're broke if you're like me i was sleeping on a couch in a mobile home no car, no closet to put my clothes. I had a little bag, no money, $47, I remember, in my bank account. I went into commission-based sales. Salaries have killed more hopes and dreams, have stifled more potential than anything in the modern world. Salaries are the devil. You might not agree because you go, salary safety. Oh, this isn't the 1950s anymore. Your salary isn't safe. Your salary is not safe. So if you're at the bottom, if you are literally homeless, if you have physical health and you can get a haircut, you go right into commission sales and you learn to close deals and you can't. It took me nine months. I was selling life insurance, health insurance, life insurance. Within nine months, I was making eight grand a month. Pretty much steady, almost on autopilot. I had some residuals, not a ton, but I had open deals and I was pretty much just eight grand a month. Okay, I started in sales. So if you're watching, there's not that much more for you to listen to about this conversation right here, except why aren't you selling right now? And you might say, but Ty, I don't like sales. I don't fucking, well, do you like having nothing? Life, sometimes you got to be Spartan. You have to be tough. So it's like, I didn't ask you if you liked it. I bet you the pain of having nothing is worse than the pain of having to go into sales. You don't have to do it forever. But an interesting statistic is 75% of the self-made billionaires in the world who didn't inherit their money started in direct sales or were involved heavily in direct sales. You can, I remember when I got in direct sales selling life insurance, 
the first month I opened a deal, it ended up not closing, but the commission was $110,000. I remember being like, I can do one or two phone calls if it's a, and I stumble across a big deal and I make a hundred thousand. I, I was like, never, no one in my family that I knew had ever, my stepdad worked at the post office. He made, I think I remember him saying he makes $28,000 a year. So you don't have to go door to door. Now, some of you say, I hate sales. Well, reprogram and rehypnotize your mind. Reprogram and rehypnotize your mind. Okay. You can't always be weak willed. You can't always be weak willed. Okay. Just put it off. Let me just put it right here. Just take it off the screen. Weak willed people stay at the bottom. So it's not that bad. Now you might say, but I'm an introvert. Stop with the introvert bullshit. People are throwing that word around and it doesn't even mean what you were told. The machine told you that the thing about introverts is they need to recharge their batteries. Who's ever heard that garbage? Who's ever heard it? The definition of an introvert, when you go out in public, you gotta go home and recharge your battery. Anybody ever heard this nonsense that somebody just invented? You can go read Carl Jung's book. He invented the word, the terminology introvert, extrovert. He never said anything about that. <laughs> I posted his exact quotes, the man who invented it. That's like saying, oh, I, Albert Einstein didn't even know what E equals MC squared is. Let me, E stands for elephant, M stands for Madonna, and C stands for Charlie Brown squared. He'd be like, bro, Einstein defined his own phrase. <laughs> Energy equals the mass times the constant squared. That's what equals the MC squared. So people are going around, I'm not going to do sales. I'm not going to learn to close deals because I'm an introvert. That's not introvert. Actually, you're confusing your social anxiety. The technical term, doom, 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 if you look at the hexaco score, the 25 facets of human personality, there's one called social boldness. So you have social anxiety and social boldness. This can be fixed. Introverts process the world in their inner world. Extroverts do it by talking back and forth. That's, that's, that's Jung's definition. I'm summarizing it. Introverts do it in the inner world. They think through things on the inner world. Extroverts think through things by talking to friends. And in fact, Jung didn't even like introverts. He made introverts sound like bad people who are narcissists. So I don't think that's true, okay, that introverts are bad people. But Jung didn't even. So don't call yourself. You can be just be honest. You have social anxiety. And it's keeping you from getting what you want in life. Who here has social anxiety and you've been told it's introversion? That's the machine tricking you. The machine's tricking you. It's like, oh, well, how do you keep people in the machine of other people? Working for them in a job you hate financially. You just tell them that you're born that way and you're not going to be able to talk to people and close deals because you're an introvert. Just making shit up. That's what the world's doing. Extroverts, introverts can both have social anxiety, both can have social boldness. You must have social boldness. Look, I mentor people, people come work for me, I have an intern program, I have people who are on my payroll. Every one of them, I'm like, I'm gonna, you wanna come work for me? I'm gonna bust up the bullshit propaganda that you were taught by the machine. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna help you build your own machine that you're in charge of. Someone said, Gary V and Ty Lopez should happen. This weekend, I just, me and Gary V were speaking to 7,000 people. He's been on my show before. Um, so you're at the bottom. You learn sales and commissions. And you work for somebody else. It will allow you to make enough money to take care of the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. <whistles> Food safety, water, physiological. Now, for those of you already doing that, you're moved to second. You, you, you're able to pay the rent barely. But you, need, you don't have enough safety. That's the second part of Maslow's hierarchy of your needs. We're all the same on this one. Black, white, Chinese, everybody. All the enemies, Ukraine and Russia, they're all the same on the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Everyone wants food, shelter, water. And then above that, we want some padding, some safety, enough money in the bank that if you have a bad month, you're still good. So where do you go once you get past number one? Now you launch your business. You get small. There's only four types of businesses I recommend. There's only four. Because if you're launching an outdated business model, it's going to be five years from now as AI takes over, you're going to be doing nothing. A lot of you are launching old school businesses. Sometimes they work, but in general, you want to make your money online. So you get your commission sales job. You move up 
to the next stage, you're not making any money. Then you start selling closing deals. Commission will put you to 100 to 200,000. I can train anybody who's healthy and a decent IQ, not, not genius. I can make somebody close a million bucks a year in sales commission. I mentor people, dude. I spit out badasses. In fact, a lot of the people running the biggest sales floors in the world right now are my former students. They worked for me. They came and sold for me for a couple of years. And now they're running the big guy. They're running for the $100 million sales floor. Guy. And they were just regular people. One guy that I trained was a musician in Hollywood. Never did sales. He, he played guitar. So some of you just need a mentor. Kick it in gear. A lot of people get stuck on the bottom because they have no momentum. You know how you get momentum? Some mentor comes and kicks you in the ass, just like a boot camp. Not physically necessarily, although this world will do better sometimes with a kick in the ass. But a constructive criticism one. Constructive criticism one. Okay? You don't want somebody kicking you in the butt who hates you. I'm talking about who somebody has your best intention. My mentor, Joel Salatin, kicked the door down. When I was 19 years old, working on his farm, I was supposed to wake up at five, four in the morning early instead of five and go out. He had big, he had a Brahmin cattle herd. Brahma cattle are like meaner cows. Okay. There's Boz Taurus, Boz Indicus, for those of you who know cows. I have a big farm. And uh, so he had the cows. They're the ones that have the hump on the back, the Boz Indicus. They do better in the heat. And he was going in the corral and I was supposed to be there. In general, you want two people to open the gates and I wasn't there. And instead of being there, I overslept. And, and a cow hit, you know, broke his ribs. So cows are, <laughs> cows are 800 to 1200 pounds. And so he got his ribs broken. He came, he was a tough dude. While his ribs were broken, he came, I remember being asleep and he kicked that door off the hinges. He was a big, strong farmer guy. Still is a strong. And that's the last time in my life I ever overslept. That was my kick in the ass. Wake up. Because if you're not waking up, things are going wrong. And so you need a mentor. You need somebody to wake you up when you're at the bottom. I really at all levels, I'm not sure. You know, if you look at a lot of the wealthiest people in the world, like they had a mentor. Like Mark Zuckerberg is the youngest, wealthiest person in the world in history, really. And Steve Jobs mentored him. That's a good mentor. Who here would like Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, to be your mentor? Some people have it all. Some people have it all. And But if you didn't get mentored by Steve Jobs, the good news is there's still a chance. you got to find your mentor. you got to find somebody. And by the way, that is different um, than the machine. How does the machine teach you? How did you learn? Besides your mom and dad, how'd you learn? Think about it for a second. You know? Um, how did you learn? Just honestly, think about it. You got to reverse engineer. The three regrets the average person has is who they marry, the career they choice, chose, and the educational path they were put on by other people. So this is how you were taught. You were sat down in a chair for the machine, you weren't inspired, you weren't entertained, you were commanded. And nobody does well by continual commands. Learn nine times nine is 81. Learn seven. Now, you might say, Ty, that's super practical. Maybe it's not so practical anymore when you don't really need those skills. What you need now is critical thinking skills, negotiation skills, the ability to read people. Who here knows how to read people? You know how to use somebody's hand to read their dominant hormone patterns? Testosterone, estrogen. Never taught you that in school. That's science. That's not astrology. That's not palm reading. Machines are never going to teach you that. <laughs> the machine doesn't teach stuff like that. It doesn't teach you how to launch a business. Nah, it doesn't teach you that. Why would it teach you that? It's not built. For the machine started in the 1880s, 1890s. The Kaiser, you know, all these, all these German, uh, pre-Germany. Germany was formed in the 1880s. I think it was around 1884. There was no Germany. Just like there was no Italy is a new. Italy was in the 1900s. So the reason you don't know what I'm talking about is because you were taught in the Western style. The way the East teaches you is the way Native Americans taught. 
the way tribal leaders taught. If they had a son and they wanted that son to learn how to hunt, they didn't put him in a classroom at age six ever with somebody else teaching him, ever. I mean, maybe there was occasional, but the way they taught him is come along and shadow me. I'm going hunting. You're 11. Let's go. That's how mothers and fathers taught their kids. So my question for you is, why the hell did that ever stop? Because that worked. Now, you might say, but what about higher things? Engineering, medicine. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean? How's medicine taught? Medicine's taught by shadowing. My cousin just became a medical doctor at UCLA. He went for a couple of years, like four years of undergrad. Then you put you in a residency and you follow around a doctor. And then, I mean, what are you talking about? See, doctors are taught in the way you should be taught to make money. But you're not. You were sat in a classroom and you never shadowed anybody. Your gym teacher probably didn't wasn't athletic. Remember that? You get the gym teacher that looks like he should go to gym. You're like, what the fuck is this guy? No qualifications needed except a body. The modern machine education just needs bodies to show up. No offense to teachers. There's great teachers and there's horrible ones. It's just like regular humanity. I don't put anybody on a pedestal or I don't degrade anybody. Teachers are, there's whack teachers and there's amazing teachers. Just like in everything in the world, there's amazing car salesmen and horrible cars. I mean, it's the, welcome to the world. There's no, they're no saints, but they're not sinners automatically either. So my point is, so what should you be learning? So there's four ways to make money online and that's it. So first you have the king and queen skill. I told you, king is sales. 85%, uh, 75% of the self-made billionaires in the world, the warlords that control this world, started or had a huge chunk of their career in direct sales. Even that guy there, Elon Musk, read the book. He used to train his sales guys for Tesla every single day, seven days a week at 9 p.m. how to sell better. Remember when they were that you would get called from Tesla and all that? This man believes in sales. Now, what's the queen? So you have the king of making money skill. The one you didn't learn at all at school or from your parents. I'll cheat you. I'm doing it right now. Sales and persuasion. The king is sales. What's the queen? Marketing. Marketing is the automation of sales. Sales is one-to-one. -one. That's why we call it direct sales. Either on the phone, knocking on doors, or at an event, right? Or from stage, you're talking to humans non-robotically. Marketing is where you take your sales and you automate it. I build a funnel. You can build funnels that make you $50 million. It's an automated funnel. People are clicking on a Facebook ad and they're watching a video and it takes them to buy stuff. Marketing is automated sales. So sales and marketing, the king and the queen. So everybody, now if you wanted to be mentored by me, I wouldn't allow any of you in my program if you weren't committed to the king and queen. Because if I taught you then after you have the king and queen, you have the princes and the princesses. You've got four princes, uh, two princes, two princesses. The king, the queen, and the princess and the princess, uh, the princes and the princess. How do you make money? There's four ways. I told you, the princes and princesses. This man, Elon Musk, built his wealth, his first $100 million wealth, with digital products called PayPal. And he had a, a map company before that. Digital, nothing physical. Nothing physical. PayPal was nothing. All the transactions were digital. That's a digital guy. Bernard Olnot and Jeff Bezos. He owns Louis Vuitton, Amazon, physical products. Now, they do have digital, by the way, too. And now Bernard Olnot, I think more than 50% of his revenue is coming from digital. But they, they built their wealth with physical. And Jeff Bezos has physical product e-com. So Prince number one is digital products. Prince number two is, uh, sorry, digital products and physical. What's the princess? Number three and number four. This man here did business services. He helped businesses grow services and software. He owns Oracle. I call this man the invisible, unknown billionaire. He's the fourth richest person in the world. Nobody even knows who Larry Ellison is. He helped businesses grow. He sold services from his business. It's called B2B. These guys did B2C. This guy did a little bit of both, Bill Gates. And what's the fourth kind? Well, the fourth kind is not shown on a face here. Apple resells other people's products as an affiliate. Reselling is the fourth. That's the, that's the princess. 
reselling. Apple makes 30% every time you buy somebody else's product on the app store. It's the most profitable part of their entire damn business model. You know? Um, so, who here's a master of all four? If you're a master of all four, you'll always have money. You'll always have money. Now, there's something you I recommend you learn that's unrelated. Once you're making profit, so you start out with sales and marketing, you learn that. You move up, you get at these four, you pick one of these four things, physical e-commerce, digital e-commerce, business services, affiliate marketing, resell. Once you get there, you're going to start to make profit. Where do you put the profit? Land. Land and real estate. Okay. And as you do this, almost all wealthy people, this man owns the most real estate in the United States, over 1 million acres. Farmland. I, I like to buy farmland. I don't have a million acres though. Um, and Jeff Bezos, no, sorry, Bill Gates is like 300,000 acres. Jeff Bezos, they say, secretly purchased about a million acres. These guys like to compete with each other. Warlords have big egos, ladies and gentlemen. Warlords have big egos. Um, yeah, warlords have big egos. Now, so now you've moved up Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You started with sales and marketing in the king and queen. You got those skills. You got commissions. You're making money. You move up. You want to get out of the machine, launch your own business. You're going to pick one of those four things. You pick one of the four. Flip a coin. You can add more later. Just start with one. Like Confucius said, the man who chases two rabbits catches none. So you just start with one. You can pick digital, physical products, business services like SMMA, an agency, or you can do affiliate marketing resale. Above that, once you do that, you start to buy real estate to invest your profits. Now, some people make their money down here with real estate. That's fine. But the statistical odds, there's zero of the top, like 40 people that are the wealthiest in the world made their first money with real estate. Does that make sense? None of these people made their money, their first money, but they all invest in real estate. So real estate is an important component as you move up Maslow's hierarchy of needs because it creates passive income, it's tax advantage, and it's uh, slow and steady. Then once you're here, for those of you who said you're more, you're at level four, you're thinking, you're at the point where you almost could retire. This is when you look at selling a business, selling a piece of your company, or if you're more aggressive, you have more testosterone, that's the testosterone finger estrogen, you may go buy your competitors out. You're like, I don't want to retire, I want to get bigger, okay? So, Ted Turner, is Ted Turner still alive? Who knows? Somebody said Ted Turner. I'm like, is Ted still alive? He used to be the biggest landowner. I'm not sure he's alive anymore, but I should know that. So anyway, now. Yeah, he's 84. He's worth 2.5 million. Yeah. Now, let me take a millisecond of questions. Millisecond of questions. What's something that a more advanced person, I have a mentoring program, so I have a high net worth for people that are retired or, or scaling. I just brought on a uh, somebody that goes went into my private client consulting program. He's got $3 billion worth of real estate in Europe. He's the largest landowner in Europe, commercial real estate. So I work with you know people that are four plus people. I've worked all the way down. I've got business partners that are on the Forbes list right now in different businesses. And so one thing I've learned is you don't have to always try to get on this list. In fact, I'm not sure it's a healthy goal to try to become a billionaire. But just because I know this audience, who here is interested in becoming a billionaire? Real talk. Who has a slight interest? And by the way, I always say, did you count the cost? Because did you count the cost of going into the jungle? The warlords live in the jungle and uh, there's snakes. There's panthers and there's quicksand and swamps and crocodiles. So a lot of people say they want to be a billionaire. Well, I'm like, if I took you into the jungle, you'd be coming right. You'd walk into the jungle and come right back out. Not everybody has to go into the jungle. And <laughs> not everybody needs to go into the jungle. Somebody said, Ty, you're reading the words of a billionaire. Or right, so are you Prometheus on my YouTube? You're a billionaire now. Jack Dawson said, zero interest in being a billionaire, but I would like a net worth of 20 million. Here's an interesting poll. 
what's the net worth you would like to have? By the way, I'm going to do some giveaways. So what's my link for if you guys want to switch from social over to my private Zoom? You should, I'm going to put the link in a second. Rick will ask uh, Adam because Corey what it is. And you can pin it there. And I'll pin it over here. If you want to be, I'm going to do a session after the live call on Insta, YouTube, Twitter. Go over to the Zoom. We're going to talk on some stuff on a private Zoom because I realize I don't want to get kicked off any more platforms like TikTok did yesterday. Okay? The more money, the deeper in the jungle. Nick Batista. Oh, wow. He's, the comments get stuck. There's a lot of damn comments. Somebody wants 1 million, 100 billion, 50 million, 30. Axel Martinez is 30 million, 300 million, 1 billion. <laughs> John Clark is going to be a trillionaire. Look, maybe think like use quantum physics. You need to think in probabilities. So you all know quantum physics has this concept that the second you measure something, it changes. For example, they have this little you look through a slit concept. But also what they do is you assign probabilities to everything. So I'm going to just I'm going to correct you all because one of the ways the machine keeps you working in the machine at nine to five is it holds out these crazy goals that one day you'll be a trillionaire. Well, you need to assign a probability. There is a more than 0% chance one person on this live stream. Let's see. There's a huge difference between this. So I do the math in this hour talk. My guess, yesterday there was 40,000 people over the period of time just on TikTok. So I have about 60,000 people come in and out. Only about a third of them stay for long. That's how live calls are. But let's say this call is going to be 20 to 60,000 people, okay? There is this non-zero percent chance that somebody becomes a trillionaire, but it's low as hell odds. So you need to think in probabilities. Somebody should think, what's the odds I can become worth a million dollars or two million, okay? That's a higher probability than you'll have 10 million net worth or 1 billion. So don't get too far down. The machine keeps you starry. I like one day I have nothing now and I'm making no progress. Really? I was talking to a guy. One of you said you've been, you got a business, you're making only 60 grand a year for two years, but you're probably at home and you're like daydreaming. Like, one day it's all going to change for me. I mean, that's okay. Visualization. I call it imagination. It's okay. It's much better though, to assign probabilities. So what's the odds in the next three years I can become, let's say you would say I can make, 20 grand a month or have a $2 million net worth or whatever that number you're thinking probably and be like, ah, I got a 50% chance of doing that. I got to throw, and you got a 1% chance of becoming what somebody said, a hundred billion. And as my mentor, Joel Salatin said, be careful what you ask for, because the worst thing in life is to grow old and get something. And then you realize it sucks. Some of you would become a billionaire and let's be real. People go crazy. Not happy. So my question for you, I'm going to rephrase this, okay? I'm going to be a mentor to you all here for free. I have a paid mentoring program. I'm going to do this for free. What's a probability? What's the least amount of money that you think you have a high probability of actually making per month? Let's just throw that out there. What's the low? I mean, I've made, you know, online, I've been making for the last 10 years, even longer, you know, never less than 100 grand a month, sometimes 2 million a month, 5 million a month, like just depends. Somebody said 160 grand. What's the, but you didn't, you forgot the probability. You're not learning from physics. Assign probabilities to different outcomes that you want. Understand the quantum world. Brennan Herbert just wrote 50 million. That means nothing. What's the odds you become 50 million? F Kitty said 5 million. Okay. What's the probabilities? Here, I like this. Elena McIntyre on my private Zoom that's running over here. Got two laptops. 80% chance in the next five years that you could be doing 20K a month. I like that. That's a bit. Now, be more creative with your imagination, Elena. What's the odds you'll be doing 40 grand in the next five years? Or 100 grand? Give yourself three probabilities. Pessimistic one, but not too pessimistic. I'm not talking about if you're dead. Pessimistic one, 
optimistic one, realistic one. So Robin, we can see who you said making 160 grand, you give yourself a 3% chance. Shit. That you're too pessimistic, man. Robin, do you have a normal IQ? If I was mentoring you, I bet money that I could get you to 160 grand if you would listen in any country. Assuming you have average or decent health an average or decent IQ. Okay, if you have if you're a vegetable in the hospital. But you're you're being way too conservative. Alex Rojas said 75 million. I mean 75% chance you'll be worth 5 million. But Alex, you forgot to say by when is it a 75% chance you'll have 5 million new dollars in your bank account tomorrow? Bullshit. No, you ain't going to have that. So you're forgetting the three parameters of planning. The goal, the probability, the deadline. I repeat, the goal, you said $5 million net worth. The probability, you put 75%. You forgot the deadline. People without deadline never accomplish anything. People with deadline. You know why actors get in such good shape? Because the director calls them, you want to make $10 million doing this movie? Okay. You got to be a super ripped superhero for a Marvel movie, and we start shooting in 90 days. That dude or woman becomes a rip machine in 90 days because they have a deadline. That's why my mentor program, like the high net worth people, I'm like, you got eight months. They're like, I want to be in your one-year program. I'm like, eight-month program. You can do it again, but it's eight months because I'm putting a deadline on you transforming your life. You know? Jose said, I'm struggling a lot with perfectionism and decision-making. Hell yeah, that's what the machine teaches you to do. It doesn't teach you the appropriate time to be a perfectionist. Perfectionists make more money, but only laser focus targeted perfection. If you're a perfectionist about everything, you'll have over analysis leading to paralysis. So you have to know when can you be sloppy and when can you be aggressive and perfectionistic. Wolverine guy, three weeks to get fit. That's right. I like this. Zeon Cypher, 7K a month, 80% in two years. Good. Robin says, with your coaching time, 80% chance I can do $160,000 a month within 18 months. Okay. So my question, Robin, is where are you now? Let's see if this is realistic. So let's say you can do a lot within a year. Ah, uh, There's a famous guy said, uh, people un overestimate what they can do in a month and underestimate what they can now, the problem is when I tell people that, people, I don't want to wait a decade. Well, you might have to, mofo. So you better start because the clock starts ticking when you begin. So if you don't like the thought that's going to be 10 years, you better not take six months because then it's 10 months from it's 10 years and six months. Robin, you're doing 1200 a month and you want to get 180. Thou, uh, uh, sorry, you want to be doing 40,000 a month. Why don't we assign a higher probability to take you from 1200 a month to 12,000? I like that. Why do you have to jump 25x from you know twelve hundred dollars a month to forty thousand? I, I feel you know, I'm gonna tell you a story. I went to high school, there was a teacher, he had his books, he was there were stairs, there were concrete stairs. Instead of just going slowly step by step, he decided to take like two stairs and run up them and he tripped for some reason. He held his books and didn't let him go. And he hit his nose like that on the concrete stairs. And he told me it's the most painful surgery he ever had. They had to like pull cartilage out of his nose. So be careful, those of you who are making a thousand dollars a month now, and you're telling me you're gonna be making a hundred thousand in a year. Are you sure you can even handle that velocity? Everybody goes, no, Ty, I can handle the velocity of money. Are you sure? I've had velocity of money come. You can't always handle that velocity, ladies and gentlemen. That velocity can be painful. Karen said, how old is Ty? And someone said, Ty is, is ageless. I, I, I'm a vampire. People always try. I, I have, I used to like talk about my age and then there's all these theories online of my age. People putting their different numbers. So I decided I'll keep it a mystery forever. Keep them talking about you. Karen, how old do you think? How old do I look? How old do I act is the real question. How old do I act? Jack said Ty's 38, but he's really 130, looking 24. Okay, I like this. 
And somebody said, um, Cameron has no faith. He's like, Ty's 48. Okay, good. Um, all right, so we're gonna about to go into the next session. What is that link, Rick? Did you pin it? I haven't posted it. Yet. Can you call? Yeah, let's I'm gonna post the link soon. We're gonna do a session just on my private Zoom. It's totally free. I recommend you go I over. Just it. It's tylopez.com slash zoom. I'll put it, I'll try to pin it here. Um, tylopez.com slash zoom. If you want to hear the next session, I'm going to keep going a few more minutes, but tylopez.com slash zoom. Let me pin this. Okay. So tylopez.com slash zoom. Come over. It's the same stream. It's just, we're going to continue it on my private zoom. Now, Here's some practical things. I gave you some practical advice. I didn't have time to teach you how to do the king, which is sales or the queen marketing. But I'll give you a little hint. To get good at sales and marketing and really all levels, master persuasion. You know, they ever heard always be selling? Every one of these dudes is always selling you. Elon Musk likes selling so much he bought TikTok. I mean, Twitter, not TikTok, sorry. He bought Twitter specifically. So about every time he posts like one to five million people see his tweet. And he posts multiple times per day. And each month, my guess is Elon Musk easily gets two to four hundred million uh, impressions or views, depending on how you're counting it. Just on X. I'm not talking about easy. I know, guys. I mean, I know how much I've gotten. And he's way more famous than me. So he's get, he's doing two to four hundred million maybe spiking if you count his other stuff besides X to 800 million views. I mean, it's like 10% of the world watching him per month. Okay. He's always selling. Every time you see him, you know, he does Tesla cars. When you go to buy a car, I just got hit an Uber the other day. It's like Tesla's all show up. Jeff Bezos is always selling. He calls it the everything store. You got the two, you got Mukesh Ambani, the Gatan family from India. I'm not as close to what they're doing, although I now know India is basically the biggest country in the world. People don't realize that. The Google guys are always selling. 60 to 70% of people, we use the word Google to mean search. That's insanity. Every time you look at a YouTube, they're throwing an ad in. Every time you scroll, you're seeing ad words. So when you're, this one guy asked me, he's making 60 million, or 60,000, sorry, uh, a year with your business. It just has, it's because you don't sell enough. Now you might say, I hate selling. Well, hire somebody else to do it. I mean, shit, I don't like doing the dishes. I have a maid, you know? And if you have a business, you can, but you got to have that. And people don't spend on marketing. You want to make a million bucks a month? You better be spending a couple hundred grand. You easily need to be dropping 15 to 30% of your top line in paid ads. No, Ty, good products don't need to be marketed. Well, TikTok became the first half a trillion dollar company in a, like in under five years. They spent 18 billion in one year on marketing. So you're stuck because you don't do sales and you don't do marketing. It's pretty simple. So anyway, um, a lot of you have moved over to Zoom. Good. TyLopez.com slash Zoom. I'm moving you off Instagram. You'll be led into my private Zoom. We're going to do more training. I'm, I don't want to get kicked off Instagram TikTok, so I'm starting slowly but surely getting people moving over. Tylobas.com slash Zoom. Now, here's a practical tip for every one of you. I'm going to give you a challenge, okay? It's a five, It's a seven-day challenge. My seven-day challenge is you got to find somebody to shadow, to mentor you, especially those of you who are at level three. You're making money. You're scaling, but not fast enough. You have to, have to have a mentor soon. The reason why is because you'll learn about 10 times faster by shadowing than the old way that the machine had you have, you know, textbooks sitting in a room being lectured. Even the way I'm teaching you now is not as good as if you followed me around for a day, or if you could ask me question and answers as you were approach, as you were building your business. So I have a private, the, the point of today's call is not just to sell you into something, but for those of you who are a little more advanced, I have a private coaching program. I literally call it my private head high net worth coaching program 
So if you're interested in that, we'll, I'll have them put a link. Um, you can pay and you can pay all eight months up front, get a discount. You can pay four months at a time, or you can pay monthly. Is anybody interested in that? It's not cheap. It's not like five bucks a month. It's not like an app or anything. Anybody interested? Just put interested. We've got two levels. One's a thousand dollars a month. Cancel anytime. So it's not risky. Okay. Or you can do the two thousand a month, and you get access to my WhatsApp Q and A in person. I've got an in person event in Vegas. You'll get one or two tickets. Um, I alternate between London and Vegas, so you can use the ticket anytime in the next eight months. Um, we have deep dive Zooms. We have a Telegram group. So if you're interested in that, it's tylopezcom slash four. Tylopezcom slash four. Okay. Tylopez. Somebody said, when I hit my new sales quota, yeah, go to tylopez.com slash four. There's two options. You can see the difference. Cancel anytime. I just, I used to do, look, people pay me a hundred to a million dollars to do coaching and consulting. The thing about that is it's, <laughs> I, in the modern world, people want to have convenience. Oh, by the way, it's also a seven day trial. You can try seven days, which is like a dollar or something like that. So it's, I reduce the risk because I believe in mentor. I have mentors. You know, a lot of people say gurus are bad. Like, oh, that person's a self-help guru. Fuck yeah. You're an idiot if you think you don't need a guru. You know, Mahatma Gandhi, one of the people, possibly in the last hundred years, a little more, but the last hundred years, the most important, the most world-changing person is Mahatma Gandhi because he changed India and India has the most people in the world. He said it. he helped it break free from colonial rule of Great Britain. He said, I believe in the power of the guru. I always have a guru. It's insane. You know that documentary they made fun of Tony Robbins on Netflix called Not Your Guru? Fuck those people. I'm going to make a counter one called Yes, You Fucking Need a Guru. And I'm going to sell it to Netflix. You don't need a guru. You know what we call them now? If you want to get in shape, you get a personal trainer. That's a guru. That's somebody who's, and most personal trainers suck. But if you get a personal trainer who's a guru, your body will change in two months. Yeah, you need a guru. God, people sometimes like, Ty, you're a self-help guru. I'm like, thanks for the compliment. Because I spent my whole life and to this day trying to find the best gurus. I call it mentor because we live in a pussy society. And if you say guru, people are like, well, that's a guru. You need a guru. And if you can't handle that word, use mentor. But you don't need a teacher. Teachers is what the machine does. You really want, you think teachers work? America's got a ton of teachers. Nobody knows anything. Nobody, America scores horrible. There's plenty of teacher. You don't need a teacher. You need a guru or a mentor. You don't need a teacher. hundred years from now, your grandkids will be like, you guys had teachers? People don't learn that way. You know what a teacher taught me? That only 10% of people learn by hearing. Yet they were lecturing me that they are ineffective. Let that sink in. Teachers tell you, uh, uh, the average, only about 10% of people learn by hearing or being lectured as they don't understand the irony that they're lecturing you they say 80 uh, percent of people are kinesthetic they learn by doing things with somebody yeah damn straight you get a guru mentor who goes to the gym with you we call them private personal trainers for some weirdo reason you should call them your guru and that person does the bench press says tuck your elbows in if you have shoulder pain i work out with becca swanson sometimes Strongest woman in history, Guinness Book of World Records. She's like, I, I had to hurt my shoulder. She's a guru working out with me. She benched 601, men. If you think you're strong, Becca Swanson benched 601 pounds. Go look at her YouTube. You can see her winning the Guinness Book of World Record. She told, showed me, he's like, ah, you shatter. She's like, keep the elbows in tight so you engage the lats more than the shoulders. You think I'm going to learn that by a teacher lecturing? Teachers don't even know it. A guru is somebody who's walked the path and says, come with me. I'll show you how to do it. The path is dark. The path is dangerous through this jungle. I go through this all the time. If you want to go to the top of the Himalayas, you use a Sherpa. Sherpa's like, I've been up there 18 times. You want to go with me or you want to try it on your own? Teachers just say, there's Mount Himal, there's uh, Mount Everest, approximately 22,000 feet. I'd like you to memorize that. And uh, I'm a teacher and fuck teachers. Really? Now, I know some great teachers, but fuck the teaching system. I want gurus. I want mentors. I want people. The teachers teach you that they're ineffective. 
They say people learn kinesthetically, yet they teach you by lecturing you, which doesn't work. And it's ironic because maybe I'm lecturing you on this live, but I'm inviting some of you to come shadow me. And that's how you learn. And, and, that's, and isn't it funny? The mass media calls people, well, Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins changed my life. So people say, oh, Tony Robbins, they make a hit piece on Tony Robbins. Of course, it's Netflix, it's Fufu, you know, <laughs> Kumbaya land. Oh, you know what's wrong with the world? Tony Robbins. Yeah, I'm sure the great evil in the world is Tony Robbins. I mean, if I think of the 10 worst things that happened to humanity, uh, bubonic plague in the 1300s, uh, the Mongol hordes, <laughs> the Viking invasions, plundering and murdering in the 900s, um, World War I, the Battle of the Somme, a million people dying in a day, Stalingrad, the, the greatest battle in human history, nuclear bombs. I'm also going to put Tony Robbins in there because he is a scourge of the earth. Fuck these people. You all are brainwashed if you even let that in your psyche. Uh, what we need is more. He walked the path. I like Tony Robbins. He became a millionaire himself in other businesses besides teaching. So for me, I'm like, bring on the guru. Bring on the mentor. I'm trying to find him all the time. I have a, a mentor who's a billionaire on the Ford list, Tilma Fertitta. You know, I try to talk to him when I can. He's a busy dude. But I'm looking for the mentor. I'm not going, let me make an expose. I see people saying, well, people who make money by teaching other people how to make money, it, uh, they're bad people. Well, what's a book then? Um, you're saying somebody who sells a book is a bad person about how they made money? Charlie Munger, the business partner of Warren Buffett, there's a book called Poor Charlie's Almanac. You tell me, and he charges a hundred bucks for that book. So you're saying um, Charlie Munger doesn't know how to make money because he charges money to teach you how to make money? Ray Dalio has a book, Principles. He made billions, he charges you for a book, so he doesn't know how to make money. The logic. The weak minds and the weak logic of your critics are kooky. Like, I'm like, let me smash up. You want to criticize me? Let me smash you to the ground. You don't know what you're talking about. You can't even hold up to 10 seconds of a logical person. Of course, people can teach and charge money for it. But it's better if they're a mentor and a guru. It's a personal trainer, a bad dude. Bad woman? No. They're critical. Personal trainers is a great profession. They actually help people with great results. Wildly good results. Okay? Hold on. Somebody's phone. So I hope each of you find your guru. <laughs> I hope that goes viral. Finds a guru. Isn't that a scary Indian word? And Americans like, oh, anything bad? I don't know. What was Jesus Christ? They called him master. They called the people who followed him disciples. Good guy or bad guy? Let me ask Judeo-Christian America. Or if you're Muslim, what is Muhammad? Was he a master? A teacher? A guru? He's more than a teacher. I think he's a high school teacher. Muhammad is to... What was Buddha, if you're a Buddhist? The guru. What was Confucius? The guru. You know? So isn't it funny that the guru's got a bad name? Of course it is. Because the machine doesn't want you to learn effectively. Because then you stop working in someone else's machine. You literally will stop working in someone's machine. The second you reach enlightenment yourself. So I hope you find your guru. Really want to know what changed the game? What changed me at 19 years old is Joel Salatin took me under his wing. When Joel Salatin took me under his wing, okay, it was a game changer. Instant game changer. I was 19. Became a second father to me. He's like, come out. We're going to go work in the fields. I'll show you how to work, Ty. I'll show you how to wake up. I'll show you how to train yourself with discipline. He wasn't a teacher. I had had teachers. Oh, teachers didn't help me. Uh-uh. No, no, no. The guru did. The master. The master and the guru. Who's calling me 15 times? Sheesh. Somebody got me on bottom box. 
So, how long ago? So yeah, Joel Salatin mentored me for eighteen months. Then I lived with the Amish. Um, I lived with the Amish for two and a half years. A guy named Sam Chuck was like a guru. Help me find happiness. You know, the Amish are the happiest people statistically in the United States and probably in the world. There's a book. The author of Guns, Germs, and Steel has a lot of research. Pulitzer Prize winning on the Amish. He told me in person. So. Who's your mentor? Who's your guru? Who's somebody you listen to? By the way, one word of caution. The guru is not a saint. And the second you think the guru is a saint, you can be a disappointed person. Okay? You, you can have somebody you dislike as your guru. Like, my mom hates Bill Gates. You know you could hate Bill Gates, and he could be a guru to teach you how to make money? You could just make the money he made and do, if you think he's evil, just take the, make the money he made and do it for good. Why not learn? Are you telling me you can only learn from saints? Because you can have a list. Who is a saint? Who's a saint? Well, people go, well, I don't know if I want to learn from this guy because I read an article. Well, who are you going to learn from? Everybody big has an article written about him. Now, Mahatma Gandhi has people write things. Mother Teresa oh, wrote a book on how she wasn't a great person. No shit, Sherlock. There's no, there's no gods except God, if you believe in God. Everybody, but you can still have them as a guru. In fact, if you want to learn self-defense, what do you want your guru to be like? You want to do been to prison 17 times, got a gunshot wound through the cheek, has hands all fogged up, ears, cauliflower, nose broken. Sometimes your guru should be the ruthless person, depending on what the goal is. So you want to learn how to defend yourself in a life or death situation? You want somebody in a ballet tutu who's like, I've never driven, driven over one mile over the speed limit. I'm like, give me the psychopath. Give me the psychopath with the cauliflower ears and the broken nose in seven directions. So when it comes to making money, one of the things you all do wrong is you really look for that saintly billionaire. And I'm like, you've gone to the wrong department. This is all warlords, every single one of them. I mean, I respect the warlords. Read the new Elon Musk book about how he is. You think that's a saint? You don't know how to read. So get that person in your life. Begin to shadow them. Begin to ask them questions. And the next thing you know, your life is transformed. Really. That's the closest thing to hypnosis and magic that I know. Humans were built genetically to learn by following their father or their mother into the jungle who had been there before. They weren't, we are not built to sit in our villages and sit around and one randomly hired teacher, you got to ask, why are you a teacher? But they randomly come in and they go, today we'll learn about the jungle. I have pictures about the jungle. Uh, I haven't been in the jungle, but I will teach you what I interviewed that person over there who's walking in the jungle, this is what they, no, forget that. You get, you need someone who goes, I'm going in the jungle. You want to be wealthy? Let's go in the wealth jungle together. Follow me. I don't know everything, but I'll show you what I know. Yeah. Some of you, the main reason you're not scaling, by the way, everybody should move off social to tylopez.com slash Zoom. So as I continue this talk, you don't miss anything. Tylopez.com, I'm going to, about two minutes, I'm going to shut these off. Everybody go to tylopas.com slash Zoom if you're really interested in this. I want to go a little bit deeper, but I get more distracting. So the one, two, three is you're mastering the king and queen skills, sales and persuasion, sales and marketing, sorry. Number two, you're being sure you're making money in one of the four quadrants. Okay, I call them the prince and princesses. Okay, physical, e-com, digital products, affiliate reselling or selling services to businesses like Larry else. Okay, then from there, once you're, and you're, especially those who are more advanced, you need to bring somebody in who's been to that the high level. I have mentors. I mean, without mentors, I, I actually think it's kind of impossible. I saw a list. Warren Buffett said what changed his life was Charlie Munger. Charlie Munger is older than him, and they became business partners, but he, make no mistake, it was his mentor. And Warren Buffett listens to one other person on earth. There's only, I mean, this guy keeps $100 billion in cash. Not many people can tell him what to do. He has his older mentor, Charlie Munger. And so, and that took Warren Buffett from being worth a 
couple hundred million to having a what was it at its peak recently? Eight hundred billion dollar company, almost a trillion dollar company. He'll probably get there if he lives long enough. So, yeah. So let's talk about how to get a mentor. So for those of you who are, you have no, I have a program that's more for advanced entrepreneurs. So I'll put the link, but not every one of you is going to be able to afford that. Okay. So, but I want to help you anyway. The reason I don't make a program, I can't have, if I put a $1 program and I'll let people shadow me, it's just, it'll be too many people and I, nobody will get a benefit. So I do try to give people access to me through social media, like live, these are free. So if one thing that'll help you go right now and just Google online, commission sales jobs, phone sales is a great way. Cause if you can get good at phone sales, you can travel the world and just make your money on your phone. I remember being in Sweden and being like, man, this is when the internet revolution was going to make money online. And I was like, I was on a train. Sweden was the first place to have Wi-Fi everywhere. And I was on a train going from Stockholm to Malmo. And I was with my friend, come on. And I was like, come on, man, I'm making money while we're having fun. We were in Sweden, the land of the most beautiful women in the world. Where, and I didn't have to be in North Carolina. And I was like, that was the beginning of my life, actually. I remember it. I looked over and I'm like, dude. I was, like, I was using Skype. That was before, like, what's up? I'm on Skype. And I was closing a commission deal, making like three grand, which was a lot of money to me back then. I closed a deal on Skype, on the train, and I, and I realized I have freedom. That's the day I realized the, the machine. I'm my own machine now. I'm like, I drive the car of the machine. The car is my machine, and I'm in the driver's seat. I'm no longer a wheel being ground into the dirt continually. So, phone sales. For those of you at the bottom, you got to learn phone sales. You just have to. Or you can do it in person. And you might say, but no, Ty, I want to do 75% of self-made billionaires did direct sales. You're not better than Elon Musk. Okay. You're not better. Bill Gates at 16 used to change his voice so he could sell things. He'd be like, uh, this is uh, Bill Gates. Uh, Steve Jobs, he went in person to, to sell the idea of Apple and to raise the money. He went, I think it was the door of the guys who founded Hewlett Packard. He showed up at like Packard's door selling Steve Jobs. It's not always be selling. You ever heard that? Or always be closing, ABC. Anybody ever? It's always be, it's ABP. Always be persuading. You can't always close. You try to close. That's like going on a date with a girl. And, oh, I got to always be closing. It's like, here's a wedding ring. Would you like to get married? Or like, would you like to sleep with me? First five minutes, always be closing, always be closing. Now, fuck that. Always be persuading. Always be persuading. So for those of you at the bottom, if you listen to me, I'll do this live call again in a couple of weeks. And some of you will be making your first 10 grand a month. And you'll be like, why didn't anybody tell me that? Now, you're going to say, but Ty, how do I get good at phone sales? I'm going to give you one practical tip. When you get on the phone with somebody, find out how much cash they have in their bank account. You can't sell a $1,000 product to someone with $100 in their bank account. You can't sell a $5,000 product to somebody who has $3 in their bank account. The art of phone sales is mostly finding out what their conscious mind wants, what product they already decided they want, how their unconscious works, are they dopamine, serotonin, uh, oxytocin, or testosterone driven? And then lastly, how much money they have because they're constrained. So those are the three things all you have to learn to really be good at sales. I just told you right now. You can watch the replay on my Instagram. Fast forward to this. I'll talk more about this on telehoops.com slash Zoom, by the way. You should be on telehoops.com slash Zoom. Everybody who knew came over from social to my private Zoom. Can you just say what platform you just came over from? I saw a ton of you just poof, pour over. The four hormonal types, I call it the TENS formula. There's cortisol-based people. Those are threat-based. There's empathy-based people. Those are oxytocin. There's novelty-based people. Those are dopamine. And there's structure-based people. Those are serotonin. So somebody just came from Insta, Insta, Insta. If you're already on Zoom, you don't have to say. YouTube, Insta, anybody here from Facebook, come over here. Jared Gordon, hi, I'm from Boston. I was on the YouTube and Instagram, and now you moved over. Good, so it's a lot of you Instagrammers. My Instagram numbers are dropping, but everybody's coming over here. Somebody came from MySpace. Believe it or not, Tom from MySpace, the founder, is in my 67. He's in my 67 set program. He used to come play basketball with me. Uh, good, nobody's coming over from TikTok. I should have moved everybody from TikTok. Okay, 
So I'm going to go do a session real quick. We're going to shut off here. I'm going over to tylopez.com. By the way, don't exit out of here. I want to post this replay to Instagram. So just make sure it's plugged in. So everybody, if you want, if this is helpful, I'm going to go give some practical things on launching a business, scaling a business, retiring from a business. Okay, all the things you want. And I'm only talking online businesses. That's my thing. I've been doing it almost longer than anybody that out there that I know. I built my first funnel in 01. Okay, I started young as a teenager. So I'll show you all some tricks. Tylopez.com slash Zoom. If you're on Instagram, this my Zoom is rising. And when you come into the chat, to my private Zoom, it's free. Free private Zoom, free private Zoom, free. Just say your where you came from. Say the platform, so announce yourself. All right, so we're going 60 seconds left for everybody here and here to move to Tylopez.com slash Zoom. Okay, they're pouring in. Sheila P from IG, Axel Martinez from YouTube, Patrick from YouTube, Zach Stepek, Facebook. Your name is, oh, Moed in Instagram. I said mixed. Somebody's from Iceland. <laughs> you put Iceland Instagram. I was just in Iceland. What a cool place, boy. Iceland is no joke. That place is a magical. They got trolls there. They got earthquakes there. It's a, it's a wild place. I was there on the warmest day of the year. July 15th, and it was cold, and there was earthquakes in four days, like earthquake every day. Anyway, tylopes.com slash Zoom, you got 30 seconds left if you're on Insta, 30 seconds. Announce yourself on the private free Zoom so we can continue. We got still more training coming. Canterbury, UK, here in Italy. It's one in the morning. You're the top. I'm glad. Thank you for still being there. Now Ty can be more raw. Yeah, I'm a little bit hesitant to say stuff because I'm getting kicked off TikTok live for a while. So I want to move everything on private Zoom where I got free speech again. You freeze. It's funny. Social media was supposed to be free speech. Whatever happened to that? I like what Elon's doing at X. It's like now some of X is a little bit cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but I'd rather have craziness than censoring, you know, because it's like who's deciding who gets censored? Censored. The machine. You see what I'm saying? The machine. All right. So we're got 10 seconds left. Tylopes.com slash Zoom for my free private Zoom. Announce yourself. Numbers are rising. Tylopes.com slash Zoom. Columbia, you can say where you're from. Okay. They're thinking. Okay. Columbia, San Diego. I meant what platform you're from, but I'm glad. Kathmandu, Nepal. Oh, I want to go there. KJB from Instagram. Awesome. You got five more seconds. When you tylopes.com slash Zoom, we'll redirect you to a free private Zoom where I got free speech again. Hashi Okay. Go ahead and end this. I'm going to end this.